Happy Friday, baseball fans. Chris Durrell here with rotopros.com to bring you my breakdown of the 14-game main slate on Friday, July 26th. So if you're not a Rotopros member, make sure to get over to rotopros.com, get your free trial, whether you're signing up for a weekly, monthly, or yearly subscription. Use promo code MLB uh, when signing up, and after your free trial, you're going to get 50% off your first payment just for watching the video and, and joining in. Um, over at Roto Pros, we what we do we concentrate a lot on one-on-one uh, -on -one coaching is a big thing. The personal touch, um, teaching players, you know, not just giving them picks each and every day and, and how to fill out their lineups because um, we do provide uh, sample skeleton lineups. But the biggest thing that we provide is um, you can talk to any of our customers if you get in there for a free trial. Is that we really spend a lot of time one-on-one -on -one teaching them not only how to build lineups but how to uh, select the right contests, how to to manage your bankroll um, to sustain this in the long run. And MLB season, that's even more important because that's a really big grind, um, probably the most grindiest, not really a word, of sports out there. Um, so bankroll manager is probably almost more important than lineup construction itself. So get over to rotorpros.com, sign up today. We're pretty sure you're not going to be disappointed. With that, we're going to jump into um, the slate here tonight, I'm going to go ahead and share my screen here shortly. I'm going to look at the cheat sheet, and uh, what I'm going to do here is go through pitchers and then each individual position with a couple of core plays and a couple of GPP plays that I'm going to be looking at tonight. Obviously, it's going to be important to pay attention to when lineups come out this afternoon. Um, this video is being recorded at about 12.15 p.m. Eastern. It takes a little bit of time to upload where I am with the internet I've got, so it is a little bit behind from what I'm talking about from time. So we may have seen some lineups come in by then, but as of now, we've got no lineups in, and my plays will change. So if you want to get this members-only uh, cheat sheet, you have to be a Rotor Pros member. Um, so jump over there, get that. And you're going to see all my highlighted plays updated throughout the day, along with uh, park information, um, weather information, umpire information, updated odds. Um, and as you'll see on the cheat sheet, as lineups come in, you're going to see a batting order there as well. Um, so as lineups come in, all the players that aren't in the starting lineup obviously are deleted from the sheet, just so it's easier to navigate through and find the players that you're looking for. And then that batting order is obviously huge because the further up in the order is kind of where we target for cash games just because they're going to, they're getting more plate appearances per game than guys that are hitting down in the order. Obviously, if you are targeting a player that is possibly um, down in the order that you do like one that kind of stands out to me, um, like in the Yankees is Mike Talkman. Uh, tonight, he usually hits like eight, nine in the order. What I like from guys that hit down in the order, if I'm, you know, looking at them, they're maybe red hot. Um, they're on a team that's projected for a lot of runs in, in a night is I'll take those players and I'll, I'll kind of separate them from who those cheap players that are hitting down in the order that are on the road versus at home. And I'm going to lean the guys that are on the road just because the road team is is guaranteed all nine at bats. Like in, in nine innings, they're, they're guaranteed at bats in all nine of those innings versus the home team. If they're up, they're not going to be able to get that at bat, that extra at bat in the bottom of the ninth, which could be crucial as we know. Um, small separations of points, um, you know, separate us from cashing or not cashing or winning a GPP and just like doubling up in your money. So pay attention to that. Uh, so we're just going to go over, we're going to flip over the sheet here and start having a look at the pitchers. Um, if you're tuning in after, make sure to check out the timestamps below as I am going to uh, add them and you're going to see, you'll be able to click through. If you're just looking for the first base breakdown, you can definitely just click first base or second base, uh, outfield and so on um, in the breakdown. So you don't got to go through the whole video if you're just looking for maybe what were Chris's picks uh, in the outfield. So keep in mind that I do have those timestamps down below there. Um, definitely utilize them, can save you some time when doing your research. So first up for me, number one in my model tonight is Zach Grinke. Uh, pretty simple here, really. He is a 178 favorite in the lowest total game of the day in the best hitting park. So he checks off a ton of boxes. He doesn't give you that huge upside with only a 23.7% K rate, 9.8% um, swing and strike rate, just below average, but he doesn't walk anyone. 3.3% walk rate, second best in the slate to Ryu. Obviously, uh, Jose Urquidy down here but that's a lot smaller sample size, so I'm not really looking at that. And then you go ahead and look at the opponent. He's facing Miami. He's got a 75 WRC plus against righties. They've been one of the worst offenses in baseball the entire season, right there with the Tigers. 
Um, they've been trending down lately, 75 WRC plus since the All-Star break, 69 over the last seven days with a 27% K rate. Literally, outside of the, the big upside that uh, um, some of these guys with the higher K percentages like uh, Lance Lynn, um, Zach Wheeler's at 26%, James Paxton 29%, other than now that really high upside, which we have seen Grinky um, give us in the past, you know, if we go and we look at some of his game logs, he's not getting double-digit strikeouts a whole bunch. He's got it once this year against San Diego, but he's up there in the seven, eight, nine. He gets that quite consistently. He had nine in his last start against Milwaukee, um, six against St. Louis, nine against Colorado. So he does have that, you know, strikeout, you know, maybe strikeout, strikeout and a half per inning upside. So it is there. But other than that, he checks every single box. Easily my top play of the night. I like going down um, to Paxton next just because he's sub 9K on both sites. I know Boston just went off last night. I think he's going to make a sneaky GPP play just because I think a lot of people will go, you know, maybe Soroka or Lin or Ryu. Um, of these top guys, I'm really concentrating on Grinky. Um, maybe secondary in that group would be Lin just because of the K upside there. Oakland... But as you can see, Ryu and Lin both have down matchups, especially Ryu when looking at uh, splits there as well. So I'm going to be going down to Paxson for GPP. He's got that huge K upside that we know about. Um, Boston's been up and down. They put up a ton of runs last night. They're definitely GPP winners. Um, shout out to Josh who put out an excellent uh, uh, skeleton. He talked about Boston a ton last night, and he made it work with his pitchers as well there. Um, so if you put the right fill-ins with those skeleton lineups, you definitely won some GPPs and we had some happy customers this morning. So shout out to Josh there. So back to Paxton. Yeah, he's coming off a terrible start. He only went three and two thirds or three and a third against Colorado, uh, five hits. There were seven earned runs. There were some errors in that game, but only four of those were earned, um, six strikeouts. So he had like just about two strikeouts per nine or yeah, two strikeouts per inning. Sorry. Um, but he does have that big upside. He has faced Boston earlier in the year. He, Not that I'm really looking at that because obviously Boston is a different team now. They struggled earlier in the season. But he went eight innings, two hits, two hit shutout, um, 12 strikeouts, 1K. So he does have that upside. I don't think a lot of people will look that way, especially after the monster runs that Boston put up last night. So Paxton makes a good GPP play for me. Starting pitcher two that I'm going to be pairing with Grinky here is going to be Joey Lachese. I've totally butchered that name. 7,700 on DraftKings, 7,100 on Fandle. He's a 150 favorite in a, in a lower eight over under tonight. Um, pretty good park there in San Diego. As you can see, it doesn't rank, as you would think, near the top. Uh, it really suppresses the power in the bottom 10 there, 18th and runs. But still a really good pitcher's park. He's fourth overall in the model. Um, his ERA and XFIP are right around that 425, 427. That's, you know, we don't see a lot of regression coming either way. He's kind of been... Um, consistent that way isn't you know he's not going to give us that ton of upside either he's not one of those pitchers I mean relative to the price I think it's great the upside that he gives with like a 22.6 percent K rate backs it up with 11.3 percent swinging strike rate he really throws out the ground balls as well that's really where the safety comes with that 48 percent ground ball rate and 35 percent uh, hard percentage and then same thing with his like his ex slug and his ex woba comparing those two to his woba and slug they're, they're right there within like five points of each other. So not too concerned about him. He is coming off a bad start against Chicago in Chicago. Um, not really worried about that really. He Before that, he only gave up three hits to Atlanta, struck out four. Um, before that, it was the Dodgers. He only gave up six hits, three earned runs. I mean, only two, two of those were home runs, but uh, pretty serviceable effort. This, the matchup's a lot better tonight against San Francisco. They're really making a push for the playoffs. And they have been a lot better lately, as you can tell um, from the All-Star break, just slightly above average, actually. Um, the last seven days, they've kind of went on a slide again, 67 WRC+, plus, uh, 130 ISO over the last seven days. So definitely looking at Lucchesi um, as my SP2. Yarbrough would be more of a GPP play. He's going to be, I believe he's the pre projected long reliever tonight for Tampa. Um, I believe Diego Castillo may be getting in there as the opener tonight. But going up against Toronto... He doesn't have the highest K rate either, but uh, just kind of looking at his game logs, he's been fairly solid this season. He doesn't walk a ton of guys. Um, he's going to give you five, six innings, even with an opener in there at times. He's seen five or six innings um, in the right matchups. He has faced Toronto earlier in the year. He only went three and two-thirds, two hits, no runs, um, only one strikeout. 
a little bit earlier in there again, two run or two innings. He gave up uh, no hits in that and struck out one. So he hasn't really got that um, stretched out against Toronto yet, but he has had some success against them. He has been solid and he's super cheap. So we're, you know, um, 7,100 on Fandle. You can build a good hitters lineup and just really stack up. You're looking for about 16 to 20 points on DraftKings. Um, so you really need that win, which I think Tampa Bay is more than capable of getting tonight, even though they've been down a little bit. And then on the other side of this matchup, you want to go even cheaper and punt and maybe not even have to worry about the win so much but i believe you know it is there um is uh jacob wagus back um of the jays he is 6800 so you're only looking for about 14 points from him uh, a little bit cheaper on that end of things he's got more upside than than yarbo in the same game is he's almost two runs lower on the xfip 24 percent k rate really good 13 percent swinging strike rate doesn't walk a bunch of guys so that's all lining up and then, like I talked about with Tampa Bay, they have been better um, against righties, obviously, here. As you can see, they're 105, so only 5% better than league average. But they have struggled lately quite a bit, almost 28% K rate in the last seven days, 68 WRC+. Plus. Even in the last 14 days, looking back to the All-Star break, they're just slightly below average. And they're hitting Meadows has been down a little bit. Fam's been down a little bit. So their top hitters are, are not on top of their game. So I'll definitely con consider uh, Wegs back there as a cheap pitcher. All right, we are going to move on into the individual positions here and talk about some plays that I like. Uh, so first up in the catchers, we're looking at, I like Wilson Contreras going up against Gio Gonzalez. He has crushed lefties this season. He's expensive, so he's going to be GPP for me. Um, core play right now, I'm looking at uh, Grandal against Hendricks. Not the greatest of matchups, but uh, good park. Um, he's been good, 20, 126 WRC plus against righties. Uh, he's a switch hitter and 48% hard contact rate. I, I don't mind that at all. A little bit more on DraftKings at 4,300. And then another one I'll be watching uh, is Jason Casper to see if he starts. I like his price as well if you want to go you know, more of that mid-range. Um, the Twins are right around five and a half implied runs tonight. He has been, you know, is a, he's a splits guy, so he's going to get in there against against right-handed pitching. Uh, 381 Wobble, 138 WRC plus versus ready. So that's kind of the way I'm going to go. Catchers, kind of finicky early in the day. You're really going to have to wait and see what lineups come out, where catchers are positioned in the lineup, who's starting, who's not. Um, and we might see a ton of other, you know, guys that show up down here in the value range maybe get a boost in the lineup so i don't really look at catchers until we get closer in the day i just kind of have one two three there that we're looking at jumping over into first base um the yankees are going to stand out again they're number one um and my team stacks over here 5.7 implied runs tonight they're going up against cashner who struggled since becoming a red Sox a little bit um he's got 265 ice but with his price he's going to be gpp only my core plays at the position definitely freddie freeman's number one for me today uh, he's facing Jake Arrieta, who has not only struggled, well, he's actually been okay lately, but what his biggest trouble is is against lefties. Um, huge splits there for Arietta, and Freeman has been one of the most solid players overall um, when you're looking at cash game stuff in the league. Like He's got a 388 on base percentage. Um, his X slug is actually a little bit just only a touch lower than his slugging percentage. He gives you that power. Um, he's getting on base a ton, 394 Woba overall. And then you look at his numbers against righties, 412 Woba, 155 WRC plus, 53% hard contact. Freeman's my number one. On FanDuel, um, it'll be close if I need the, you know, if I need the salary re relief tonight, depending on the, you know, I'm using Grinky, obviously. If I need that salary relief when I'm going with my other guys, I love Santana. Texas is near the top of my list tonight. He's a switch hitter and Mengden kind of has the same splits as Arietta as he's been really terrible against lefties. And then Santana's only 3,200 on FanDuel. That stands out to me again. I will definitely consider using him in first base or even uh, utility, especially in, I'm going to get into it a little bit later, but I really like Texas. I'm going to be looking at like the lefties for sure, but a lot of Texas tonight. And they're a little bit lower. It's only a nine over under and four and a half implied runs. Not too concerned about that um, just because of the splits against Mengden. And then we want to go look at the bullpen report here real quick. Um, athletics have been good for the season, but they have trended down a little bit looking at the last 14. About, so they've only got about mid-pack, so not too concerned about them having an elite bullpen that's going to completely shut them down. 
So jumping over uh, back to first, stick with first base here. Josh Bell seems very cheap on on DraftKings. I know you know if we scroll over here and look at his trends, season last 30, 14, and seven days, he's really struggled. He's only been about league average the last seven days, so he started to heat up a little bit. Um, there's signs of life there, but the last 14 days, you know, he really came out of the All Star break struggling. 58, maybe it's that home run challenge thing. Um, that really gets to guys, tires them out. If anyone should be tired, it should be Vladdy, who hit 98 home runs there. But um, he's actually starting to heat up, and I'll talk about him as a value play coming up as well. But Bell's value on DraftKings just seems very hard to get away from tonight if you need that salary relief. He's $1,200 cheaper than Encarnacion, and he's obviously been the much better player this season. I would argue that he's been better than almost all these players above him outside of maybe Freddie Freeman. So um, definitely be looking at him. GPP only on FanDuel at 3700 The price is still up there, so you're paying for a player that's maybe trending down versus it's more of a buy low on DraftKings. Then I like Cleveland. They've really heated up since the All-Star break. Their offense has been completely um, changed. They're 9.5 total, 5 implied runs, so they're right up there. Um, Santana hasn't been great, but he's been solid overall. As you can see, he's got a 405 on base percentage. That is highest of anyone at the position. So that kind of tells me that there's a lot of safety there. He's only 4,100 as a buy low on him as well on DraftKings. And he's facing Jacob Junis, who I'm going to be looking to target against tonight as well. Looking at second base, um, Keston Hira, Max Muncy, um, GPP plays at the top. They're just too expensive for me. I would lean Muncy over Hira. Hira at his price right now. I know he's been good this season. Um, 613 slug, even his X slugs at 552. So he's been excellent. Um, highly touted prospect, but he's just too expensive for me. I'd rather take Muncy against Sanchez, who's struggled a bit lately, and against lefties. But for cash games, um, I'm looking to lean a little bit more the Arizona way. I like Eduardo Escobar. He's been very solid lately. Um, not the greatest of splits about league average, but he's facing a struggle in Alcantara there. Um, the park isn't great. I'd probably, you know, Torres hits lower in the lineup. Um, and only a $100 discount on him, so he would be more of a GPP play, but I do think I love the Yankees tonight. That's kind of why I've, I've uh, highlighted him. I've talked about it yesterday. We talk about it a lot, how the Yankees have a, a solid lineup top to bottom, and we can kind of target them from top to bottom if we need some salary relief in these spots where they're projected for a lot of runs. Last night, it definitely didn't work out. Uh, Boston got the best of them, but I'm going to be going back to the well tonight. Ozzy Albies stands out. I talked about Ariad against lefties. Albies is a switch hitter. He is obviously better against lefties, but I'll definitely consider him at that little bit of a discount, especially over here on FanDuel at 3200 if you want to go a little bit cheaper, a little bit more of a balanced lineup. And then Fletcher always stands out to me if he's going to be back up hitting leadoff in front of Trout. Um, we'll pay attention to that as we get closer to lock. Jumping over to third base, we've got DJ LeMay who talked about the Yankees. Very expensive, but he's definitely my top second baseman because all these this other group of guys down here don't necessarily have the best matchups. Like Donaldson, we want lefties against Arietta. Um, Sano is very expensive. He's a little bit better on Fanduel, but still he hits lefties a lot better than righties. Um, then we got Gio Urshela hits down in the lineup for the Yankees. Uh, Justin Turner, we're looking for lefties against Sanchez again. So there's a lot of GPP stuff in those middle ranges there. So I'm definitely leaning Lemayhu if you're paying up at third base tonight. And if you want to go a little bit cheaper, uh, especially over on DraftKings, DraftKings has a lot of value tonight looking at uh, price differentials between the two. Jose Ramirez stands out. Um, not only has Cleveland he heated up, it's kind of been right there along stride with uh, what Jose Ramirez has been doing. He, again, hits lefties a little bit better, but I do like that uh, 4200 price tag on DraftKings um, going up against a weaker Jacob Junis, and he he's also been hot. We'll look at his trends here as well. Last 30 days, 149 WRC plus, uh, 175 WRC plus, last 14, 158. So very steady right around that average of about 150 WRC plus over the last month um, with a lot of power. 333 ISO, 345, 318. So over a 300 ISO um, when looking at last 30, 14, and 7 days. So definitely on Ramirez, especially on DraftKings. Cheap plays, I'll be looking to see where Jake Lamb ends up. Uh, lefty versus Alcantara, he's got some power not been consistent at all and then Vladimir Guerrero he's started to come around here again as well after some rough spots um, he's facing Yarbrough who 
He's had better splits against righties, but uh, just the price tonight, I think uh, Toronto makes maybe a sneaky spot. They're full of value. They're never expensive. Um, we can grab some of them, you know, two or three of them, and have them around 5% ownership if you want in GPPs, and they're very cheap. A couple more positions here. Let's jump into shortstop. Um, definitely Javi Baez absolutely destroys lefties. Uh, 197 WRC plus and a 470... <laughs> 474 woven, 50% hard contact is near or maybe the very top in the league right now. Um, he's facing Gio Gonzalez, not really too concerned about that. Um, aging veteran. Very close decision on DraftKings again uh, with D.D. Gregorius there. Only $100 less going up against Kashner. I've talked about the Yankees. They're projected for almost a full run more than the Cubs. So I would probably lean that way on DraftKings. But uh, it's, it's very close with the way Baez is against lefties. On Gregor or sorry, on FanDuel, Gregorius is definitely my choice there at thirty seven hundred. The price is coming up, but still six hundred dollar discount goes a long way um, from buys there, especially in cash games. If you want to go a little bit cheaper on DraftKings, uh, save a little bit more. Four hundred dollars less than Gregorius, five hundred less than buys. You got Francisco Lindor there at forty seven hundred, forty two hundred on FanDuel. He's going up against uh, Junis there. I talked about Cleveland as well. They're one of my top teams, so I'll definitely looking towards Lindor at the top of the lineup. Polanco and Swanson GPP plays for me there. And if you want to go cheap, I like Corey Seager. Again, lefty versus uh, Sanchez. Dodgers are one of the top projected teams on the night, and Seager is starting to come around. As you can see, he's got a 356 Woba, 124 WRC+. Plus. Hasn't shown that power yet, but he's been solid and a very you know above average and consistent over the last seven days here. So um, definitely be looking to him at his price because if he has, you know, if he keeps this up for two, three more days, we're going to see him in the mid 4K range on DraftKings and probably that mid 3K range on FanDuel. So feels still feels like a buy low in a really good spot here. So Seager stands out there. And then Elvis Andrus, um, he's just consistent across the board pretty much the whole season. So a uh, little bit lower on the on-base percentage, but just at his price, points per dollar wise, if you want to go that way. I would probably lean Seager on both sides. I think Andrus comes cheaper. Probably only going to fit Andrus in the lineups where I've got uh, Texas stacks. So jump into the outfield, a couple core plays here in the outfield. We'll go to the top of the salary first. I high highlighted Yelich, Trout, Bellinger, and Judge in gold. That's just because you can really go after any of them tonight. Obviously, Trout and Judge are in games with the highest uh, totals. Bellinger's not far behind. Yelich a little bit behind that under five. But they've all got plus matchups. They're all elite players. They're all very expensive. So if you can fit them, great. Um, I normally don't go that way unless the spot's like out of this world and there isn't really many other spots. On a big slate like this, I don't think we need to lean on them for cash. I think we have some better ways to go. Um, one of those ways is Marte on FanDuel. You get a little bit better discount from those top guys on FanDuel. I think I'd rather go with one of the top guys on DraftKings if you're going that way for only a couple hundred dollars more. But I love Arizona tonight. Um, it's a low total, and a lot of that has to do with the park, has to do with uh, Grinky on the other side pitching for Arizona, but I do think um, Arizona is in a good spot to hit their team total over, their projected runs of 4.3, so Marte is definitely on board there for me. I'm just going to talk about my core plays here quick. Mercado, again, talked about Cleveland. He's hitting at the top of the order. Yeah, we got a pretty good hitter's park when it comes to run production, not so much for power. He's not going to be your power guy anyway, and he's facing Junis. So if you're going with a couple, if you know Lindor, Mercado at the top of the lineup makes a lot of sense there, or Mercado, Santana, or all three of them if you want to go with Cleveland. Um, on these bigger slates, I'm more prone to going with like two man stacks than like three or four man stacks in cash games. Um, so keep that in mind. But there are some offenses where you can definitely go one, two, three, or three, two, three, four in the lineup. Uh, these powerful lineups so going down looking at some more core plays i uh, like calhoun for the angels again they're projected for almost six runs tonight he's been i believe we go over and look at his trends he's actually been very good lately uh, 186 wrc plus the last seven 158 the last 14 so since the all-star break he's been good trending back before even the all-star break the numbers have been very good as well so definitely uh be looking at cool calhoun kepler has been solid this season for minnesota they're rating right at five and a half runs projected runs tonight and both of their prices are in that mid 4k range on DraftKings mid 3k range on FanDuel makes a lot of sense love Sin Chu Chu on both sites cheaper than both of those guys you could really load up in the outfield and just go Calhoun Kepler and Chu in cash games and uh, build a really balanced lineup that way 
Chu going up against Mengden, like I said, lefties against Mengden. Um, Chu's got a, almost a 400 Woba, 144 WRC plus, 239 ISO against righties. So definitely looking there. And then for value, just going to scroll down here. Um, if LeCastro gets to the top of the lineup again, I like him as a punt on FanDuel. Uh, DeShields and Mazzara for Texas. Again, we've got, uh, I like Mazzara a little bit more for cash games um, as a lefty against Mengden. De Shields, if he gets, you know, if he was to somehow sniff the top of the lineup again in the leadoff role, I'd probably consider him a punt, especially on FanDuel, even in GPPs as a correlation play with maybe depending on what stack you're going with, where he falls in the lineup. 2400 is very cheap, allows you to uh, do a full stack of Texas there. And just looking at them lately, they've been about the same, both slightly below average. Um, neither of them really stand out, but from the power side of things, Mazar's got a 360 ISO, so that's a good thing to see. Um, he's even got uh, the better ISO when comparing the last, you know, since All Star break and even for the season. So Mazar has definitely got the more upside. DeShields comes into play as a punt if he gets moved up the lineup or as a correlation, as a maybe a lower in the order stack with Texas there. So that covers. Um, all my individual position plays tonight. You can definitely check out, check out the team stacking tab. It's going to change a lot going up to, to lock, but I talked about all these teams. I talked about Cleveland, New York, Minnesota, and Texas as my core teams to target tonight. And then I also talked about the Dodgers, Atlanta. Um, didn't talk a bunch about Seattle, but I definitely like Seattle going up against Norris tonight and Arizona against Alcantara there as well. Thanks for watching the show. If you have any questions, jump into the Roto Pros chat room. Um, if you're not a Roto Pros member, get over to rotopros.com, get your free trial, um, check out our weekly, monthly, and yearly memberships. Use the promo code MLB and you're going to get 50% off after your trial's over on your first payment. And if you can also hit me up on Twitter, at Jaeger underscore bombs there as well, or at Roto Pros on our site there. Either way, lots of ways to communicate. Ask us questions about the players um, that we're going to be targeting tonight. Uh, we're going to have nascar coming up as well so stay tuned subscribe to the channel we've got more shows coming up nascar schedule is saturday but i'm going to be doing a preview video of the race some some track history track type history stuff like that drivers to look at that video is going to be out later today possibly tonight and then i'm going to be going live again sunday morning during inspection for uh, nascar as well so a lot coming down the line we've got more and more of these baseball shows coming up we're going to really pushing for five days a week during the during the work week um, guaranteed three days for sure. Um, Josh is going to be joining me next week as well on the Friday show for sure. Probably more shows as well. So stay tuned. A lot come on Roto Pros. Thanks for joining me. Let's go get some green screens. Good luck, everyone.